Want to wrap text and logos around a mostly cubic body? I worked on this solution recently and figured it was worth a share. I'll show you two ways of doing this for a model with an assortment of fillet sizes. The first method is a bit of a process, but allows added flexibility over the second, so let's jump right into it. Like other solutions to this, we'll take advantage of sheet metal design and wrap unwrap capabilities. So I'll start by inserting a new component. My first flange will be a rectangular shape that I'll need to fully encompass the wrapping. While doing this, I'll try to keep it as tight as possible for reasons I'll note a little later. Now you might want to cut the wrapping into this now, but I'm going to suggest holding off. The reason for this is that all subsequent steps will be slow and cumbersome due to the small cuts, faces, and details, depending on the complexity of your wrap. Anyway, I'll start forming the sheet metal part around my cube, and to do so I'll leverage our new sketch pens. To designate their locations and ensure a link is created, I'll project from the existing model. When adding the bends, I'll select the stationary top and the newly created bend line. Then I'll make sure to alter two options. Well, three actually. First I'll flip the direction. Then I'll change the position to designate that this is the start of the bend. The final step is to override the rules to ensure the radius of the bend matches the model. That'll ensure it's touching the part. Then it's a bit of rinse and repeat. As you add bends around the side, some more sketches will be required. Make sure to adapt the bend size to the other corner radii. But we'll fast forward to the point where that's done. Now the reason why we made the original flange so tight around the wrap is to avoid overlapping at the bottom. If the model starts to self-intersect, you're gonna have a bad time. With that all done, we can roll back to before the bends were added, extrude the wrap feature cut through the sheet metal, and then roll the history to the end again. From there, you can use a split face to get the imprint on the original part. Now, at the end, you can optionally extend the original shape beyond the front and back edges to avoid the lines and faces created here. Next, the faster version of this will follow a similar workflow, starting with a sheet metal part. This time, we'll skip the sketch bend creation and add them all at once by sketching this from the end. Using this method, we can more easily wrap as much as possible by leaving just a small gap in this profile. We'll extrude this flange the whole length of the part, then unfold the model. Make sure to select the Unfold All Bends option here. Now, a side tip is that to select all these different cut profiles, I'll hide the body temporarily, use a selection box to gather all the profiles, then proceed to deselect unintended profile selections. While still in the extrude feature, I can then show the body, which will convert this to a cut. In the end, we'll refold, and we should have this sheet metal body formed tightly around the original body. We'll use that familiar split face option to apply this wrap. Another side tip here, don't select a face as the splitting tool. It'll most likely want to default to this, but if you scroll over the body edge, it'll select the body instead. This selection technique works in other places where bodies and faces are potential selections. To quickly apply an appearance to all these faces, I'll use a face selection filter and selection box. By pre-selecting these faces before going to the appearance tool, it makes applying these changes simple. Now this 3D wood model looks like it has some nice steel inlays. Hope that helps.